Ferrari is the most successful and famous of all Formula One teams. 16 constructors champions and 15 drivers titles put it well ahead of the opposition. But every legend has to start somewhere. And before he could start winning in Formula One, Enzo Ferrari had to defeat his old employer. This is a short view back to the past on how Ferrari started winning in F1. Gentlemen, a short view back to the past. Before the Second World War, Enzo Ferrari was a racing driver and then he became a team boss. Scuderia Ferrari took over the running of the works Alfa Romeo team during the 1930s. It was successful and he won races, but they struggled to keep pace with the Mercedes and Auto Union developments. During 1938, Alfa Romeo took the running of the team back in-house, but kept Enzo on. He left at the end of 1939 to set up his own company, but part of the deal of leaving Alfa Romeo was that he couldn't use his own name. That's why the first cars built by Enzo Ferrari weren't called Ferraris. The Tipo 815s that raced at the 1940 Mille Emilia don't have Ferrari on the entry list. After the Second World War, Enzo was able to use his own name on his cars, but Alfa Romeo still set the pace in Grand Prix racing. The 1.5 litre supercharged Alfa Romeo 158, which Enzo had overseen the building of before the war, became the car to beat in the 1940s. It was built as a voiturette, which is roughly akin to today's Formula 2, but that became the new Formula 1 after the Second World War. Ferrari started competing in Grand Prix racing and his cars normally had the legs of the opposition, except for the Alfa Romeos. When Alfa Romeo decided to take a year out in 1949, it was Ferrari that tended to win the major races, led by its star driver, Alberto Ascari. However, when Alfa Romeo returned for the inaugural World Championship in 1950, they once again set the pace with Ferrari the best of the rest. However, Enzo had spotted that the unsupercharged 4.5 litre Talbot Largos often picked up strong places against the Alfa Romeos and Maseratis and other Italian opposition because of their better fuel consumption. The Alfa 158-159 series was developed and developed and developed. By 1951, it was producing over 400 brake horsepower, more than twice what it had done when it first appeared but it was at the cost of horrendous fuel consumption, as low as one and a half miles per gallon. That meant lots of refueling stops to get through a Grand Prix. That's why the Talbot Largos were picking up places, and that's why he got Aurelio Lampredi to design a four and a half litre unsupercharged engine for the Ferrari 375. This car first appeared towards the end of 1950, and it showed potential. Alfa Romeo continued to set the pace in the first part of 1951, but it was clear that Ferrari was knocking on the door and had the right combination of speed and fuel efficiency to take the fight to their dominant power. The breakthrough came on July the 14th, 1951 at Silverstone. Jose Froilán González, normally Ascari's number two driver, had one of his day of days. He defeated the full Alfa Romeo team to take Ferrari's first World Championship victory. It opened the floodgates. Alberto Ascari won the next two races and went into the season finale at the Spanish Grand Prix with a chance of beating Juan Manuel Fangio, Alfa Romeo's lead driver, to the Drivers' Championship. Unfortunately for Ferrari, they made a major tactical error. They decided to change the wheel and tyre sizes for that final race. The result was catastrophic tyre failures and problems which massively hampered their cars, despite the raw pace of the 375. It left the door open for Juan Manuel Fangio to win the Drivers' title for Alfa Romeo. The postscript to this is that Alfa Romeo, having seen the new competitiveness of the Ferrari, realised that they didn't have the financial clout to develop a new car and withdrew from Grand Prix racing. The BRM, the great British hope of the time, was still a shambles and struggled to get a car to any race, never mind finish it. That left Ferrari really on its own in Formula 1. So organisers decided the World Championship should be run for Formula 2 regulations for 1952 and 1953. This was partly successful in that it definitely got more cars on the grid. However, it did absolutely nothing to stop Ferrari's domination. Ascari stalked two world titles comfortably and there was an entire calendar year which he was the only person to win a World Championship Grand Prix. So, modern complaints about domination in Formula 1. Yeah, it could be an awful lot worse. So the Ferrari 500, a four-cylinder Formula 2 car, is actually the first Ferrari to win the World Championship. But it's really the Ferrari 375 that finished off Alfa Romeo and started Ferrari on its winning ways in Formula 1. What story would you like us to cover next on A Short View Back to the Past? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.